Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, wherever in the world you may be today. And thank you for joining us for this webinar titled Unusual Franchise Concepts Part 2. Uh, my name is Troy Franklin, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of World Franchise Associates, and I'll be the chairperson and one of the three speakers for this webinar. This webinar is part of the Tuesday webinar series uh, brought to you by the Franchise Talk and, uh, and TGFN, the global franchise market, which are intellectual property of index conferences and exhibitions based out of Dubai. And, uh, and they run a Tuesday webinar every month. Today's webinar, I'll be starting and, uh, and presenting initially. Uh, followed by Mr. Damon Crandall of uh, Units. He's the Franchise Development Director of Units. And then uh, after Damon, uh, Mr. Chris, Mr. Christopher Brinkley, a Director of License Sales for Surflakes. And uh, once the three of us are finished, you can expect that if you type in any questions in the chat box, we will answer your questions. I'll, we'll read them out and answer them uh, at the conclusion of the webinar. And in the meantime, um, enjoy the, the presentations, and we look forward to hearing from you at the end. Um, program, I'll do the introduction. Um, to set the stage for what is an unusual franchise, I'm going to talk to you a bit about history and evolution of franchising, give you some education about that. Uh, we'll hand it over to Damon, um, who will introduce the great units, moving and portable storage franchise opportunity, and why units is such a great solution for the move, moving and portable storage needs internationally. And then uh, Christopher will take over and introduce Surf Lakes, which is a Australian-based surf park concept, which has the world's uh, most innovative surf park technology and is looking for licensees around the world. And then we'll, we'll wrap up, as I said earlier, with the Q&A. So let's start with the origins of franchising. Um, some, some really um, uh, far back history of franchising. Franchising started in the Middle Ages. Um, the word franchise is actually a, uh, has uh, come from the French word franchir, or, or Frankish word franc, uh, Anglo-French word, and, and really it relates to liberty and freedom. Um, and, uh, and the first franchises were said to be serfs who operated on the lands of the Lord's and made their money off the land to earn, earn income and, and buy freedom. Uh, franchising um, continued to evolve in Europe. In the 1600s, the Dutch and the UK governments formed Dutch East India Company and London Company, um, who were exploratory companies in the Southeast Asia, Asia region, and, uh, and the, the Americas. And these were effectively a form of franchising. And then in the 1800s, in, again, in Europe, um, Germany, the UK, and, and uh, mainland Europe, uh, brewers started granting licenses and, and uh, rights to taverns to sell their, their beverages. So moving on to, uh, to the New World in, in the US, which is widely considered uh, the place where fran franchising did originate. Um, there's different theories on what the first US franchise was. Some uh, argue that it was or say it was Singer sewing machines uh, in the 1800s, but but I've read uh, some very interesting articles about about Benjamin Franklin and the fact that back during the American Independence days he effectively franchised his printing business, uh, making him the first U.S. franchisor. Um, Singer was a very early mover in the franchising industry. Um, Singer sewing machines in the 1800s. Harper Method Salons, Harvey House autom and, and Automobile Distributors uh, from Ford and uh, Chrysler. And then later um, in the early 1900s, we had A&W, White Castle, and Howard Johnson. Some of those names are still familiar today. But really, franchising as we know it today started to boom in the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, F&B brands like KFC, uh, Carvel, Dairy Queen, Dunkin' Donuts, Burger King, McDonald's, International House of Pancakes and Wendy's. Uh, many of these are now the top food franchise brands and food operators in the world. 
in the non-food, you started to see a variety of laundry and dry cleaners, uh, hotels, rental car businesses, automotive services, uh, temp services, and things like that. Some examples were Midas Mufflers, Holiday Inn Hotel Chain, which is now owned by IHG Group, and uh, well, the well-known budget rental car. So with all this growth came, came uh, growing pains, and uh, the growing pains were felt in many cases more by the franchisees and the franchisors. And, uh, and uh, as a consequence of that boom, um, U.S. state governments and, and later the, the, the federal government implemented regulations. Uh, remember, franchisee, franchising originates, or the word originates from freedom, and the, the uh, institutions decided they needed to help the little guy or the mom and pop. Uh, and that's when they came up with uh, franchise disclosure documents and uniform franchise offering circulars and, and materials that are still in place today. And, and as the boom continued, franchising started to take on very distinctive formats, business format franchising, product franchising, licensing, and others. And, and, and probably the most common form of franchising that, that is uh, used internationally um, is, is what we call business format franchising, which is the format that most of those brands uh, listed above and most of the international franchise brands um, are using today. So just some facts about international franchising. Um, F&B franchises are typically the first to expand internationally or were. Um, you know, KFCs have been, been around the world for 60 or 70 years. Um, when a local homegrown franchise industry springs up in an emerging or developing country, typically the first one is a food franchise. Um, F&B franchises make up well over half of the number of total franchise uh, businesses and turnover worldwide, um, particularly in develop developed countries, but even higher in developing countries. Um, although non-food franchising is gaining ground and has been for for the last 20 years. Um, and this has to do with socioeconomic factors like urbanization, rising GDPs, uh, workforce evolution, such as the fact that in many emerging and developing markets, husbands and wives are both now working, which may not have been the case uh, 30 years ago. And, and therefore the way they manage their, their home um, and use services has, uh, has also transformed. And today there are franchises from every sector operating on every continent, uh, Non-food typically is less crowded than food uh, and less competitive, but again, that is that is changing. So what is an unusual franchise? Um, this is uh, to some extent subjective. Um, it's very easy to define a franchise in a category like food, services, or retail. Um, and, and they are normally broken down into those type of categories. But, but I would say one man's odd is another man's ordinary, and, and there may be different opinions. Also, I think in, in terms of franchising, the words unusual and unique, which are both different and have different meanings, uh, can apply to, to uh, many of the franchises. So, so many are both unusual and unique. Um, franchises that would have been considered unusual you know, 30, 20, 30 years ago are pretty commonplace now. And uh, today's ideas are gonna be tomorrow's innovations in franchising. One thing that's driving um, innovation and creating unique and unusual franchises is the rapid advancements in technology, which are driving innovation and disruptions across the industry and across uh, business in general. And one might think that this would have slowed down during the pandemic, um, but from what I'm seeing and, and hearing and discussing with, with uh, franchise experts around the world, the pandemic is actually driving more innovation and creating more disruptions. And, and uh, coming out of the pandemic, um, there are likely to be a lot of brands that have actually gotten stronger and not weaker as a result of the pandemic. So I'm gonna to touch on four brands which I think are unusual or unique in one way, shape or form. And uh, the first of those four is a brand called No NoH2O. It's an Irish brand and uh, it's a car wash. There's nothing really unique about car washes. They've been around. They've been around forever. Excuse 
excuse me, we just had a glitch. Is everyone seeing my screen now? So no H2, apologies for that, that uh, technical delay. No H2O is a waterless car wash um, business. Um, again, car washes have been around forever. Um, the unique thing about this one is that uh, you can you can use it anywhere. There's no there's no water. There's no mess. Um, it cleans indoor, outdoor, inside and outside of the car, um, including minor. including minor uh, grime and then the heavier grime. And this uh, technology has been approved and is being used by, by airlines and, um, and used on commercial aircraft. So it's been tested and proven. And again, I apologize for the, for the technical glitch. Another brand that has unique offering is Archipelago International Hotels. Uh, this is a brand that, uh, that uh, is unique in that they use a a system where they have multiple hotels and they can franchise um, different brands to the same hotel operator um, using different models, including a licensing model, a franchise model, a man what they call a manchise model, which has a combination of management and, and franchise uh, built in. And, uh, and they focus on the number of keys. So you don't agree on the number of hotels uh, or the types of hotels, you agree on how many keys you're going to open during a five-year period in a market, and the the number of keys uh, means the number of rooms in hotel industry jargon. Um, next, we have Bose Coffee. Again, coffee businesses in and of themselves wouldn't be considered unique. Um, Bose is a leading homegrown Filipino coffee brand. Uh, started in 1996, uh, has more than 100 um, well well designed and well built. Uh, comfortable, cozy cafes across the Philippines. What they have done um, in the last 13 or 14 months since the pandemic is, in my opinion, very, very unusual and unique and uh, and, and very clever. And that is that they've created um, a virtual brand, which is called Bose Coffee Daily, if you see the logo on the right. And that brand effectively is a delivery brand that operates under the umbrella of Bose Coffee with a different menu and different prices and only take away business. And, and because of the, the fact that in the Philippines there were some fairly strict lockdowns and malls were closed and they couldn't trade uh, in, in the physical stores, in the brick and mortar stores, this was a very pivotal move, pivotal move for them. Um, they also created another brand for one of the uh, food delivery aggregators um, in, in partnership and uh, that brand, again, operates under the umbrella of Bose Coffee, but has a different uh, trade name and, and uses a completely different menu. So this was a, a very unusual step that was quickly and efficiently taken in, in uh, response to the pandemic. Last but not least, we have this uh, brand Pure Nectar. It's, uh, it's managed out of Singapore. Uh, Pure Nectar is, is, is a juice brand that uses uh, fresh juice and a advanced machine that presses using several thousand pounds of pressure to extract all the, the liquid and the nutrients out of the fruits. And then they have um, a variety of very clever and very delicious uh, blends that they blend in these bottles that you see. And uh, the unique thing about this is, and the unusual thing is that they, they offer this as a distribution license where you start with a factory and you and you wholesale the juices to a hospitality, you know, hotels and hospitality businesses and convenience stores and restaurants. And then once you build a production base and get some volume, you can integrate that to kiosks and cafes and and franchise businesses um, and expand using those franchise models. So it's a B to C um, or B to B, excuse me, that has the opportunity to become a B to C. And, and that's, again, fairly unusual in the franchise sector. So my time is up. I'm going to uh, 
hand over now to uh, Damon Crandall of uh, Units, uh, the Franchise Development Director of Units. Uh, Damon will spend a, a bit of time introducing you to Units and the Units International Franchise Opportunity, and then I'll come back on and, and pass you back over to uh, Mr. Christopher Brinkley. So thank you very much for uh, for giving me the time to to present to you. And, and again, I apologize for any technical errors with the uh, with the slides and the presentation. Uh, enjoy the rest of the webinar. Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to present uh, to you today. Uh, I look forward to sharing with you the units moving in portable storage uh, franchise opportunity. Um, Units has uh, has been around for a while. We've got a very uh, very strong business model. Um, it was founded in 2004 by Michael and Holly McElhaney in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, they saw a need in the marketplace uh, for a solution, and uh, and, and built units. Uh, started franchising the the concept in 2007. Uh, currently, today we have 46 locations. Um, that are providing container and portable storage solutions to over 600 communities or 600 markets. Uh, we're really excited uh, to be here today uh, to continue to grow this great brand uh, and expand uh, internationally um, through, the, through the help of, uh, of folks just like yourselves. So today we're going to go through uh, an overview of the industry that we're in, um, the portable storage industry and the, and the moving industry, uh, and, and share with you, uh, you know, the uniqueness that the units brings to those industries. Uh, we're also going to discuss the competitive advantages um, and, and the key attributes that uh, that units has. Is, has. Um, and then we'll, we'll go over uh, certainly the, the, the business model characteristics to help you understand um, uh, the units franchise business model. Um, we'll discuss owner profile as far as a master franchise owner, uh, as well as a sub franchise owner. Um, and then we'll go over briefly the support model uh, with, uh, with the, the support model that we put in place to, to help franchisees, right? The franchisee franchise or partnership. So when you, when you look at um, the industries that we compete in, uh, the fixed storage industry is, is one of them and the moving industry is the other. So really what we've done is, is, is we've taken the traditional moving industry and the traditional uh, self-storage or fixed storage industry and we've, we've combined them together, um, taking and blending those two separate industries in, into one more efficient business model. When we look at uh, the competition in the fixed storage space, we see that there's a lot of area for uh, improvement. Um, we see that uh, there's a lot of limitations and restrictions that the uh, self-storage or fixed storage industry has on them. Um, and, uh, and, and we have a tendency to come in and, and disrupt that. Uh, simply putting, simply being that we take the solution to the customer. Um, and instead of the customer having to drive to a storage facility, we're taking the facility to them. Uh, the, air, the other area that, that uh, we compete in um, is the moving industry, right? So, so people are moving uh, all of the time. Typically, they're renting trucks, they're finally friends, family, neighbors. Um, they're loading these trucks and, and they're, they're you know, delivering their, their, their contents or their household goods to their new home, um, or they're, they're hiring a moving company. Well, in this day and age, people don't want others in their house. Um, people don't want others touching their belongings. So we, we give them a, a, a more flexible option to take a container, put it in the driveway, allow them to load and pack that container how they see fit. Uh, nobody touches their belongings. They can lock the door, um, keep the key. Nobody, uh, nobody else is, is getting into that container but themselves. We will then take that container to the location that they request. We'll drop the container and they can then unload their contents. So it certainly, uh, certainly helps with um, uh, moving uh, from by providing something that's just simply more convenient, uh, more cost effective. Uh, when especially when you start looking at the cost to rent a truck either by the hour or by the day when they can have a container for an entire month. Um, 
either a day or a week or a month. It's all the same price. So why portable storage? And when we look at this, there's a lot of built-in demand, right? The, the uh, the demand already exists. People are moving every single day in your marketplace. They need a better solution. People are storing their goods in, in self-storage centers or fixed storage centers every day. Um, and, and they need a solution that's more convenient for them. So there's they're already built in demand. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of demand out there in the space. All we've got to do is, is provide a really good high quality of service, be responsive to our customers, um, you know, deliver something that is simply more convenient and more flexible for their, their needs and their time. Um, and we'll gain our market share. Uh, it's, really, it's really that simple. Um, the, uh, the solution that we provide the customer uh, is simple. Um, as I said earlier, they don't have to pack a truck. They don't have to rent a truck. They don't have to drive a truck. We're, we're taking care of the, uh, the, the moving part of driving the truck. But that, is, that simplicity also extends into the business model as well. So what our, our franchise owners and, and their employees have to manage uh, is quite easy. There's not a lot of moving parts to our business. Um, pandemic resistant kind of spoke to that. Uh, uh, the, the homeowners and, and our clients really appreciate the fact that um, there's no contact with our, our driver. Uh, we are not contacting their belongings. Um, you know, the, the do-it-yourself solution um, as compared to, you know, hiring somebody to come move your belongings or, or pack your things um, <clears throat> is, is much more appealing these days. And then we, we, uh, we, we, we have a, a, a big focus on, on the, the business to consumer side, right? Obviously, we've been talking about moving and, and residential, um, but we not only service the residential space, we also service and, and have a, a very large large uh, commercial side of the business as well, but uh, um, with that B2B side, um, helping businesses with their, uh, with their storage needs um, as businesses grow and expand or they renovate, um, they'll do uh, restocking, they need a place to put their, put, their, uh, uh, put their goods. And so we can provide that to them. Um, so roughly our business right now is sitting at about 40% of it is, is actually uh, uh, B2B or, or commercial business. When you stop and think about it, just about every business out there, uh, you know, can utilize the services that we provide. So we've got a couple of competitive advantages that I want to talk about. I've even got a video that I'll share with you. Um, but when we, we look at the containers, uh, the containers are very important. We, we ensure that the quality of our containers is good or better than, than our competitors. It really is the gold standard in the industry. Well, we're on our seventh generation. Um, over the last 17 years, we've continually enhanced and fine-tuned this container. Uh, it is all galvanized steel. Uh, it has barn doors on it instead of a roll-up door, uh, which is much more secure. Um, it is all sealed. Uh, it has a flex band seal around it. Um, it it's just a, a high quality container that's going to last our franchise owners you know, 20 plus years as long as it's well-maintained. Um, they're also vented and, uh, and designed to withstand the elements um, in really any climate. So they can be stacked uh, in the warehouse up to three high. Good thing to know there. And then we look at our container delivery system. Um, the delivery system is very unique. We call it the robo or the robo unit. And, and what's sig most significant about this is its maneuverability. But as you can see in the photo, we can load these containers level. So we call this level loading and, and level loading. Uh, that is limiting the shifting of the contents that are inside that container. So we're, we're, we're not damaging the goods that are in it by having that container um, go at a, a slant. Maybe you've seen uh, similar containers and they put them on what's called a roll off. The containers on wheels, and they'll, they'll use a winch and pull that container up. Well, if that container doesn't stay level, whatever is inside of it is, is really getting moved around quite a, quite a bit. Um, also in these containers, we have an E-Track strap um, or E-Track that we can, uh, you will be able to rent straps to your clients so where they can strap the belongings to the sidewalls. 
So let's look at that. Uh, let's look at that video. Let's see if I can't get this running for you. At Units Moving and Portable Storage, our robotic pickup and delivery system can place your storage container where our competitors can only dream of. The system features level loading and unloading. Units containers are kept level to the ground when being transferred to and from our delivery truck. This minimizes movement and shifting of your contents within your unit's container, something other delivery systems do not accomplish. The Robo Delivery System is maneuvered by remote control, which gives the train operator absolute precision in navigating your unit container into tight spaces. Obstacles like wires or trees are not a problem as the Robo Unit can place the container with as little as 9 feet of overhead clearance. Short and narrow driveways, alleys, parking slabs, tight parking lots, and yards are just some of the locations the Robo Delivery System can accommodate with these while many competitors cannot. Others need 15 foot in height, 13 foot in width. This isn't the case with the units. Additionally, units containers can easily be placed next to one another, minimizing placement and space requirements. Choose units for your moving and portable storage needs so you can benefit from the flexibility and precision that our robo delivery system offers. Ensuring your pickups and deliveries are easy and your items are protected when moved is what units moving and portable storage does best. So I think that does a really good job of showcasing the uh, the robo and in, in, in use, right? You, you can you can see the significance, uh, the maneuverability. Um, it's certainly unique. We spent a lot of time, money, and effort into uh, development of that, um, and 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 focus on continuous improvement. You actually saw a few generations of our robo in that video. Um, we do have a focus on continuous improvement. We'll always be doing research and development, whether it be on our containers, our delivery systems, or our trucks, um, even our IT and our software. So let's look at some of the business model characteristics of, uh, of units. Um, very quick to ramp up and, and open. Uh, we can typically have a franchisee open in 120 to 180 days. Um, and that's quite significant when you look at other business opportunities that are out there, especially retail locations that may require build out. Um, uh, we can get up and running uh, and, and, and help our franchise owner recognize a return on their investment uh, quite a bit sooner uh, since the demand is not on the location. Speaking of that, it, it goes hand in hand with the ease of the real estate. Um, since we take the solution to the customer, we don't have retail trade or walk-in trade. Uh, it gives us greater flexibility on, on the location of the facility, which leads to real estate costs, which are just less expensive than retail locations. Um, we service a, a, a market that's probably 40 to 50 miles in radius, uh, and our, our warehouse or service center can be can be situated really anywhere within it. Um, so just a lot of uh, a lot of ease in, in determining where that center needs to be. We don't need to be in a, a, a A plus location. We don't need to have traffic counts. We don't have walk-in trade. You know, people aren't coming into our location, and then that brings us to an easy operating model. Um, there's just not a lot of moving parts in our business. Uh, it, it's, it makes it easy to own and, and manage and operate. There's really uh, little to no inventory. Um, you might have a little bit of inventory and, and some straps and, and locks and blankets, but, but really that's not, that, that's it. Um, there's no spoilage to worry about, right? If you're looking at a restaurant, um, there's spoilage concerns and you're dealing with inventory with food and, and uh, utensils and plates and so on and so forth. Um, and, uh, you know, revenues being generated within our business model 24 hours a day. Uh, it, it's, it's a rental based model. So, um, you know, let's service our, 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 our community uh, during the day um, and then and then we'll have containers out on rent, you know, all day, every day. So. Um, uh, scalable. Uh, that also goes to scalable. Our business, there's really no limit on, on how large you can grow because it's limited or it's tied to the number of containers that you have. I mean, that is your limit. Um, we don't need 
multiple employees to scale this business. We, we simply need containers out on the streets and out on rent. If you look at the fixed storage type business or self-storage, that business is limited. They, if they have 200 doors, they fill that facility up, they're full. They can't scale and grow anymore unless they go buy more dirt and, and build another location, which is very capital extensive. So um, you know, our model is quite scalable uh, and scalable with very few employees. We, uh, we only need uh, two to four uh, total. Um, if you're a franchise owner that's working in your business, you can actually assume one of those positions and you only need two other people. Uh, but generally we're gonna have a driver that's gonna be driving the truck and delivering the units. We're gonna have an account manager um, that's going out in the community, building relationships, uh, networking, and then we're going to have a customer service representative um, that is going to be uh, fielding phone calls, um, you know, working on the computer, doing the dispatching and the scheduling um, for the location. So, uh, you know, again, the, the, the growth and expansion of this business is not tied to uh, tied to the labor force. It's tied to the amount of containers that we have on rent. And then last but certainly not least is, is very limited competition. Um, not everybody can start a business like units. We need, uh, or you need access to capital, uh, containers, delivery systems, uh, a facility or warehouse, and the technology that we've built into it. Um, so there's really significant barriers to, uh, to a business like ours, which, uh, which ends up at the end of the day, really limits the, uh, the amount of direct competition that's out there. So some of the service offerings that we provide, right? Where, where does our revenue come from? Well, we're servicing both the residential and the customer space or the consumer space. So we're, we're talking uh, B2B and B2C, um, or I said residential, consumer, residential commercial, apologize. So B2B and B2C, um, on-site storage. So we can drop that container off at your driveway. Uh, it can stay there for as long as you want it to, or we can take it back to our warehouse or our facility. Same goes on the commercial side. We can drop that container off at the commercial place of business um, or multiple containers, uh, and they can use them for long-term storage, uh, or we could bring them back uh, to our warehouse and, and store them inside a climate-controlled facility for them. We also have the opportunity for revenues from pickups and deliveries and curb-to-curb -curb moves. So when we take that container to a, to a customer, we get to bill for a delivery fee. When we get to pick up that container, we get to then bill for a delivery fee. When we take that container from one residence to another residence doing a curb to curb move, we also get to bill for that delivery fee. So we've got multiple revenue streams coming from the, the container rents as well as the deliveries. Um, and then you've got some add-on pieces as well, uh, uh, you know, renting blankets and, and straps, selling locks. Um, those are all things that our franchisees do and do well. Uh, another is protection plans. You're able to offer a protection plan for the contents in the container as well as the container itself. Now, one thing to note is we don't prorate the container rentals. So somebody rents a container for um, a week, we bill for a month. They rent for two weeks, we bill for a month. So, so you, can, you can actually have a container go out on rent multiple times during that month, but receive multiple months worth of revenue from that one container. So here's another video um, that just, it's another marketing tool that we have uh, that we've developed for the franchise owners, but it really explains portable storage um, and, and moving in units, uh, you know, a little deeper into the business model outside of just the robo. Moving or storing your contents does not have to be complicated and inconvenient. Do-it-yourself storage and moving with units, moving, and portable storage can save you time, money, and frustration when compared to traditional, full-service moving truck rental and fixed storage. There's no rushing and no hassle. Our process is designed to accommodate a nimble moving process that provides flexible scheduling. Stay away from renting trucks that charge by the hour. With units, you load your weather-resistant, all-steel containers at your own pace well in advance of your moving date. Our containers are leveled to the ground and do not require a ramp to load or unload. 
Unit's barn-style container doors can be easily propped to stay open while loading or unloading your container. With Unit's, one day, one week, or one month is the same price. When you're ready, give your local Unit's representative a call and we will pick up your container, bring it back to our secure, climate-controlled storage centers, or move it to another location of your choice. Need temporary storage before you move? We can take care of that at one of our many storage centers, saving you trips back and forth to a self-storage facility. Each unit service center is locally owned and operated by franchisees that know your area. There are no time constraints on the container. Feel free to pack and load at your own convenience or hire a professional for additional help. Control your own schedule. Receive personalized support. Units will simplify your moving experience. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's a great video that uh, uh, marketing uh, produced and, and came out with. And uh, it really works with uh, realtors uh, explaining, you know, the, the benefits and the opportunity um, uh, for using units or, or referring units to their customers or their clients. So now we'll look at um, the, the profiles of the franchise owners. Uh, internationally, we're looking for master franchisees. Well, we want a franchisee to take over uh, a significant territory, uh, whether it be an entire country or, or portions of, and then build that out. So we're, we're really looking for uh, somebody that's not trying to buy a job. We want somebody that wants to, to really build an empire and, uh, and, and scale. Um, when you do that, then you're going to bring on sub franchisees, right? You're going to bring them on. Uh, you're going to help manage them and, and, and help them grow successful businesses. So uh, the master franchisee is going to have uh, uh, certainly strong business acumen, strong, strong, strong financial acumen, um, and 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 be the face of the of the of the market, or be the face of the brand in a particular market, and build out that brand in that marketplace within that country. So. When we look at the sub franchise, you're an individual franchise profile. Um, they're also the face for that brand within their particular market. Um, and they're simply going to go out and they're going to build a small team. Uh, they're going to keep that and hold that team accountable uh, and, and, and growing the revenue um, and providing you know, just exceptional customer experience in, in that marketplace. So what we're able to do um, is to provide lots of support and lots of opportunity um, for our franchisees. Um, we've developed a program that is going to help them onboard. Uh, we're going to be able to train them. Uh, we're going to get them what they need in their marketplace to, to grow and excel. Uh, everything has been figured out for them. They, they don't have to go figure it out themselves or, or, or you don't. So uh, whether it comes to marketing, uh, we've got whether it's digital marketing, print marketing, um, PR, uh, brand positioning, uh, social media, right? We, we, we've got the tools for the franchisees to use. Um, we can assist with, uh, with real estate and site selection uh, and, and, and determining if that facility is gonna fit the needs uh, of your new business. Um, operational support, you're assigned a uh, franchise consultant with that's in-house within units corporate, um, who's gonna provide you the support uh, we've developed all of our IT systems and technology um, and, and, and continuous improvement on those uh, on those um, levels. And then vendor supplies, uh, vendors and suppliers. We have developed great relationships with our vendors and our suppliers, um, which definitely gives a, a franchise owner some, some opportunity to focus on what they do best, right? Go out and go out and grow that business. Um, you know, let, let units corporate handle uh, the legwork that we've done for 17 years. So one thing I will uh, add on to units uh, support is um, it's very uh, proactive instead of reactive. We built a model that wants to over support. That is our goal. We will over support our franchise owners and um, uh, it really help them excel in their business. They don't have to, we don't want them to get to a point where they're asking a question. We want them to have the answer to that question before they even ask it. So having been uh, in a couple other franchise, uh, owned a couple other franchises myself, uh, I can tell you that the, the support model that Unis has built um, is certainly second to none. Um, it's, it's very unique. 
So I want to thank you for providing me this time today to present the unit's uh, franchise opportunity with you. Um, any questions, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get them addressed. Um, on the screen is my contact information, and uh, we'll, we'll do what we can to, to help you out and, and see if we can't bring a, a, a unit to your area. Thank you very much, Damon. That was uh, that was an excellent introduction to units moving in portable storage, and uh, I think would show our our webinar attendees why units could be a great uh, franchise development opportunity uh, in their country. And I suspect there's very little competition in this segment in uh, in a lot of these international markets, particularly across the uh, GCC and the broader Middle East, North Africa region. So on that note, we are going to, to hand over to Mr. Christopher Brinkley, who is uh, heading up international license, licensing for Surflakes. And let Kit or Christopher tell us why Surflakes is such an unusual brand and a fantastic um, international licensing opportunity. Um, okay, Kit, over to you. Thank you so much, Troy, and welcome to you all. Thank you much for attending and listening to my first presentation of Surflex globally. So it's exciting for me. My name, as you heard, is Christopher Brinkley, but I'm probably better known as Kit Brinkley. And as a founder director of World Franchise Associates, we are really privileged to work with Surflex to help them establish this brand globally. More important than that, we are identifying major developers who are the sort of companies we need to deal with because many of them and their associate investors are looking for what we call ETAs. Those are exclusive territory agreements in their own countries. And I'll be sharing more details about that as we go on. So who are Surflakes and what do they do? Let's look rather carefully at the vision and mission that they've established. What they've done is they've created a really exciting and innovating wave-making technology to bring surfing to everybody. The key picture there shows some of the world's greatest surfers who've all surfed on the prototype, which I'll be showing you in Australia, and they cannot get over how effective and fantastic ways that they've got. But in the business world, if you can get 200 surfers using your surf park per hour and them at all levels, as juniors or beginners, right up to professionals, you really got something going for you. So the vision for Surflake is very clear. It's to become the biggest brand in surfing globally and also sustainably. The mission is to build surfing communities to create a healthier world. And in passing, if I was to ask all of you, how many of you are surfers, I should think it's no, no more than one or 2%. But there is such a demand for surfing and people know about it, that this is why the timing is so important. This presentation is only a dozen slides, but the full presentation of about 40 slides to give you further information is available from me or from, from uh, the company. We'll cover there in full detail about the technology, the products of Surflakes, how to develop a Surflakes project, the financials, and how to get started. That word technology has underneath it a word called revolutionary. If you'll excuse the pun, but Surflakes is creating real shockwaves right through the whole of the surfing community. Because this is not a conventional surfing park. This is a conventional park which allows 2000 rides per hour, 
for all abilities at once, for each of those surfers to have 10 rides each, so 200 surfers. And we'll look at that in more detail. The board of directors is headed up by Aaron Trevis. You can see his name on the top line there. He's the executive director and the founder. He has a very strong management team underneath him. And in addition to this list of or the pictures there you see on the screen, there are people like ourselves. There are people in Israel, in Hong Kong, in Korea, and around the world also helping to promote and educate people of the opportunity. You'll appreciate from those directors who saw that they're all fantastic guys. They are authentic surfers. They've all surf they know what they're doing there's nothing you can tell them that's new about surfing so they've developed two surf lakes one is the standard and the other is the xl the motto at the bottom there's well worth taking hold of and the motto is simply this everyone yes everyone gets a break a break of course is a surf wave and i invite you to help us make this a reality if this is something too unusual and too big for you I bet you know some people who were really interested in having this particular surf lake in your country. As the setting sun goes down, this is a wonderful picture of the prototype operating, it has been for several months now, at Yepoon in Queensland in Australia. And you can see that beautiful shape of the lake and the waves coming across the surface of the water. So how do they do all this? How does it all work? Staring at you on the right hand side, is this something you need to get hold of? 2000 waves an hour. This is unheard of in the industry. Waves which are created by what's called a central wave device, a CWD. And this massive device is like a plunger, which moves with great power through the tower unit you can see below on the left and pushes the water and wave with immense pressure. And underneath the uh, waves, there is, of course, the reefs. The reefs are specially designed on the surface of the bottom of the, of the lake so that you can create the different types of waves. The stroke, or CWD, takes place when it goes up and down. And it can be last every six seconds or longer. It can go higher or lower, so it gives a different type of wave. It's incredibly flexible. I always say when I look at this picture, Surfix is really a design dream. We deal with companies who are doing all sorts of amazing things all over the world, looking for new concepts, new ideas. And suddenly they've got Surfix waves, which are ocean-like at different levels for different people of all ages. And this gives them a huge opportunity to design something really different and something which will create more than just a theme park, but a world-class theme park. So I mentioned earlier that there are two types or two offerings for the surf lakes. This is the big one. This is the XL surf lakes. You'll see around the lake, all sorts of things going on. There's hotels are being built. Behind the scenes, there'll be F and B, there'll be retail. This is the, a magnet, a major magnet for somebody building or wanting to increase the, th the theme park that they got already to bring the focus back to what people all are enjoying is to watch the waves or take part in the waves and learn to surf. At the bottom there, there are five levels of waves which relate to the beginner. Old and young, you've never really done this before, absolutely ideal to learn to surf here. Intermediate, the next stage, then advanced, then expert, and then professional. Professional, of course, will be applicable for the big Olympic games, which are allowing surf lakes to take part, and they will uh, use it, their lakes for the Olympic competitions. Here's a smaller one, a smaller footprint, the Surf Lake Standard with three sets of waves. 
you can see that if you read the copy there, it still produces up to 2,000 rides per hour, although it's got a smaller footprint. And this Surflake standard looks after the first level, second level, and the third level. And even at the advanced level, as I'll show you in a minute, you've got some fantastic waves to enjoy. And these are the levels of different waves that are produced. For the beginner, this goes up to one meter high. Level two up to 1.8 meters, which is as tall as a man, of course, these waves coming in. Level three is the same sort of height, 1.8 meters. And you can see a world expert in there with his hair flowing behind him under level four at 2.1 meters. And for the real big barrel rolls, those who are the experts and who love this, they can't, they can't extol the value of this uh, wave which comes in at 2.4 meters, allowing them to get training done and all the aspects of professional surfing. It's not just surfing, of course, on a board, it's surfing with all types of surf craft. So you can use the stand up paddle, you can use a long board, the knee board, the short board, and of course the body board. So it all depends on how much does it cost? What are the financials? Are all in place? But this next slide will actually give you the sort of taste of what we're really talking about. We've taken the productivity and profit multipliers of our competitors, and we've looked at Surflakes itself. And if you look at the left-hand column, you'll see at the top, it says the surfer throughput every hour, then the cost per hour, the hours during the peak season, which might well be 8 a.m. in the morning till 8 p.m. at night. The sort of gross revenue that's produced each day, a week, and of course, a monthly. So if you've got surfers which uh, can take part, 20 of those in one hour, you can do the money that's generated, or some 50. But four times that, we can do it 200, as I mentioned before, 200 surfers per hour. And even at a lesser price ticket, which is about right in Australia for $45, $50, then you can see the, the figures being generated. It's really exciting. And it's really exciting because this is the global pro project pipeline. This is showing you graphically the numbers of inquiries that are coming from different parts of the world. A lot from the USA, of course, West Coast, huge number from Europe, and of course from Australia where it's, it's booming. What we're looking at is people who are available to take the exclusive territory agreements and to sign up for us, so don't miss your opportunity. And even if you don't think, as I said before, you're the one who could do this, do it, think about who else might be. And what about the price? What are we talking about? Well, I can share the CapEx for you, the capital expenditure for the larger XL Surflakes, which comes, on in, comes in at US dollars, $30 million. The standard one, the smaller one at three waves, the standard Surflakes surf lakes that comes in at 20 million dollars so it's been a real pleasure to share that with you to show you what's on the on the on the on the horizon the big project is to get the first installation away we've got four etas already signed up i'm working with people in places like saudi arabia oman and working with people in qatar and uh, certainly our teams out in, us in America are doing that as well and got some very big names lined up too. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this to the, for the whole session. And I'll leave you that beautiful picture of the setting sun and as a reminder that this is a most unusual concept, but one which within six to eight months you'll be hearing an awful lot of. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kit.
for, uh, for that very interesting presentation on surf lakes. Very exciting. Um, probably not for my generation and my age to try to try to learn to surf, but uh, but I'm sure that the uh, the younger generation and uh, and uh, people of all shapes and sizes would find this to be a very um, interesting new addition to um, the theme park um, uh, variety of theme parks in in, in their countries. Um, so we've had the three presentations, ladies and gentlemen, and um, and we've um, used up a good percentage of our time, but we do have some some few questions. And uh, what I would like to do is maybe read out um, one of the questions that's come through as we were speaking and, and answer the question. And uh, and the, the question is about units. Uh, there's two questions actually about units. One is how did units do uh, during the pandemic? How did it adapt to the pandemic? And uh, and this is a very interesting question. Um, units is not a brick and mortar business. Um, it wasn't subject to any lockdowns um, or, or restrictions um, that many other brick and mortar businesses were subject to. And in fact, due to, to uh, the economic impact of the pandemic, um, a lot of people um, did shift locations and and move both uh, residential and commercial and and units actually did uh, did well and is doing well during the pandemic um, it's very much a contactless business um, you know that the container comes to you um, you know there's not a lot of people involved the people don't have to interact directly with each other um, and and so it's a uh, it's a business that works under social distancing well the, the next question about is, a, is a, again about units. What are the franchise fees and what are the main requirements in terms of the type of franchise agreement? So the very simple explanation is units is looking for master franchise operators um, for all of the GCC and in Middle East, North Africa countries and across Europe, parts of Asia, um, Australia, New Zealand, uh, the UK, for example. Uh, a master franchisee um, doesn't have to have a great deal of experience um, in doesn't have to know anything about moving and portable storage. They have to have uh, the financial resources and the energy uh, to take on the, the unit's opportunity and challenge in their country, um, build the first warehouse and start to, to populate the uh, containers and, and offer the services and then depending on the geography of the country and the population, they can then branch out and operate uh, sub-franchises in, in, in the various cities. So for example, a unit master franchisee in the UAE may start in, in Dubai and then they may sub-franchise uh, Abu Dhabi and, uh, and uh, the other Emirates um, and places um, in the uh, you know the greater Dubai area, um, and uh, and then create a network of units sub franchisees and, and for Saudi for example you could have different operators in in Jeddah Riyadh and uh, and the Kobar area. Um, we can't give you exact terms because it varies from country to country. Um, what varies is the upfront fee, which is based on the size of the market and the number of containers, which again is based on the size of the market. Most of the other, um, most of the other financials are standard across all markets. Um, but for anyone who's asking about this specific type of, of uh, terms, please type your email address and your name into the chat and, uh, and uh, we will get back to you with separate email with more information. It's a great franchise opportunity in a, in a business, in a segment that's not very competitive. And, uh, and again, it's a fairly easy business to manage and operate. Um, we have a question for uh, Surf Lakes. I'll let Kit answer this. It says, would a real estate developer be the best candidate for Surf Lakes? When to expect to start to see some ROI? That's a very good question. And of course it's the, the sort of clients which we're looking for. Uh, we probably know some of the major developers in 
in the, in the Middle East and the Gulf states as we do. And it's quite interesting that when I when I talk to them and introduce it, I remember once we were talking in the Saudis and they were saying, I don't think this will work. Uh, and the reason he didn't think it worked was he'd never, never seen a surfboard, never even understood it, even though he was a prince and very important. Whereas when I talk to others and they, the first reaction is, wow, that is amazing. And uh, it's not just the developers, it's also the people who actually can deliver. And we are dealing with also a very powerful Saudi company who are capable of delivering, building golf courses, hotels, and all the rest of it. And they will get put the deal together and get the finance. Uh, if you've got someone like that, please let us know and direct them, as I should have mentioned earlier, that direct them to the website, which is www.surf-lakes.com.au. That's surf lakes dot com dot au and you'll see all the videos there some wonderful videos um, which i didn't have time to show you on this particular presentation any more questions have we got for that yeah we have another question which is a general question it says with these unique concepts what are the challenges in finding the right investor um it's a general question and i, and I think that, I, that i'll give a general answer um, Obviously, a, a, an investor or a master franchisee or a master licensee um, has to have a combination of, of uh, the head and the heart. Um, you know, you can't, I don't believe you can do anything well if you don't have a heart for it. So you have to see the business as something you like and feel that you would enjoy operating um, and, uh, and that's something you would have a passion for. Um, that said, if all you have is the heart, you don't have the head for it. In other words, you don't understand how to manage it, create a team, uh, build a foundation, launch the product, and, and don't have the, either the access to capital or the financial resources, um, then, then uh, that having the heart won't help. So, so the answer is you need somebody that has a good balance of the head for the business and the heart for the business. Uh, we have one more question. Uh, it's a follow-up question on the unit's earlier question. Uh, what would the investment for, for a country like the UAE be? Again, it's very hard to get into specifics in a webinar of this nature, but uh, uh, we'd be happy to, to start a separate dialogue on this uh, by email and by Zoom. Um, my email address is troy at worldfranchiseassociates.com. And again, you can type your contact information into the chat or, or let the organizer of the webinar know and we'll certainly get back to you with more information. And then we'd love to bring uh, both units and surf lakes um, to the UAE. Uh, we think it would be a great market for both brands as it would be for some of the other unique brands that I mentioned uh, during the first part of the presentation. Mm. So we're, we're, about seven or eight minutes over time. Um, if there are no more questions, um, I'd like to, to take this opportunity to thank Index, um, TGFM, uh, the Franchise Talk Tuesday webinars, in other words, the organizer for, for organizing this and for inviting us to, to, uh, to, be, uh, to be speakers and for me to chair it. It's always a pleasure to work with, with Index and the professionals at that great company. I'd like to think, thank uh, Kit for, for his Surflex presentation, Damon who had to, had to leave off early for his great unit presentation as well. And I'd like to thank all of you who have joined us from wherever you may be, wishing you a, a good rest of your day or a good, good afternoon or good evening. And, uh, and, and stay safe and, and be healthy uh, to all. Thank you very much.